These images celebrate an ancient legend, that of Prince Siddharth, who sacrificed his father's kingdom for the life of an ascetic in his search for wisdom and truth. He is known as Gautam Buddha, the Enlightened One. The Buddha was born six centuries before Christ in the valley of the river Ganges, in the heart of India's ancient civilization. Today, pilgrims from different parts of the world gather to worship and meditate at the very place that Prince Siddharth, as he was known before his enlightenment, became the Buddha. He attained decisive knowledge of the nature and cessation of human suffering. The story of the Buddha begins at Bodh Gaya, a four-hour drive from the state capital of Patna. The landscape of modern Bihar and the eastern parts of Uttar Pradesh, two of the largest states in modern India, are dotted with shrines commemorating the main events of the life of the Buddha. It was here that he lived and preached two and a half thousand years ago. The towering pinnacle of the Mahabodhi temple, or the temple of the great enlightenment, was built 1500 years ago in honor of the Buddha at Bodh Gaya. A personal experience of the surroundings in which the Buddha gained his greatest spiritual insights evokes a unique sense of history and encourages insights into the nature of his realizations and a sense of communion with that truth. Worshippers gather here, following the traditions of their own cultures, while performing prayers and rituals that reflect the diversity of contemporary forms of the Buddhist faith and its global impact. These Tibetan monks practice the rituals of the Mahayana Buddhist tradition, which evolved and was preserved for more than a thousand years in the isolation of the cold Tibetan plateau. The temple stands next to the Bodhi tree, from which it derives its name. Here the Buddha sat, under this tree. He first vanquished the temptations of the evil Mara, before his mind entered deep meditation, a fathomless openness untroubled by content. With utter clarity and tenderness, he turned his mind to untying the knot of birth, old age, sickness and death. He emerged the Buddha, the enlightened one. It was the night of the full moon in the month of Aishaka on his 35th birthday. It was to Sarnath, 130 miles away that the Buddha traveled a month later to preach his first sermon to a group of his former companions who lived and practiced austerities in the adjoining forests.
the Dhamik Stupa commemorates the first sermon of the Buddha. The event is spoken of as the first turning of the wheel of Dharma. It taught the middle path, urging the rejection of both extreme hedonism and extreme asceticism. He preached the eightfold moral path and the four noble truths. The truth of suffering, the origin and the cessation of suffering, and the path to the end of suffering. A path that leads to nirvana, the ineffable state of non-rebirth. For Buddhists around the world, the revelation of the truth or dharma by the Buddha to his disciples has another great significance. It reveals not only the wisdom of the great master, but his unlimited compassion for other creatures. Crossing the river Ganga from the north, from Patliputra, the modern Patna, the traveller, after a short hour's drive, comes upon the ruins of Vaishali, the location of countless incidents and legends from the life of the Buddha. The Buddha and his followers were itinerant monks who travelled from place to place, begging for food and giving teachings in return. During the rainy season, they would retreat to the forests to intensify and work on their practices. In time, the number of monks grew, as did the lay followers. In response to the need to accommodate them, the first monasteries were established, as here at Vaishali. Two centuries after the Buddha's death, the great emperor Ashoka raised this column over Vaishali. It became famous as the Ashoka Pillar, the pillar proclaimed Ashoka's intention to rule his vast empire according to the tenets of the Buddhist faith. The lion at the head of the pillar is a Sugata Simha, another term given to the Buddha. Now a silent spectator, the lion presides over the ancient ruins which lie uncovered by the hands of man. Villagers living in the environs still use this tank where the Buddha himself used to bathe during his stay at Vaishali. The Buddha spent 25 seasons of his ministry here in Shravasti with his community of monks amidst the mango groves. It is regarded as one of the four places common to the Buddhas of this world. The site, regarded as their chief residence, and the place where the holders of erroneous doctrines are publicly defeated. By some accounts, this was by debate. According to others, by miracles. This Ananda Bodhi tree was planted by one of his principal disciples, Ananda. It was from a seed he got from the Bodhi tree at Bodh Gaya. Under this tree, the Buddha's followers placed their offerings when he was away from the monastery. Shravasti was one of the greatest towns of ancient India at the time of the Buddha. The Buddhist scriptures record it as a site of many miracles performed by him. Nearby was the Vihara or the community of nuns with Mahaprajapati, the Buddha's stepmother. She was the first woman to be admitted into the order.
Close by lived a community of 500 blind men, all of whom regained their sight when the Buddha came and preached to them. The site now holds the excavated remains of the great works of architecture, offering a glimpse of the secular and religious life of those times. It is indeed a journey back in time. Stepping into the ruins of one of the monasteries, or viharas, you seem to enter the world of the men and women who gave up home and society to lead the austere lifestyle of Buddhist monks and nuns. Rajgir marks another major site in the Buddha's itinerary, both before and after his enlightenment. Walcher's Peak, which rises majestically over the town, was one of his favorite haunts. The ropeway is a convenient choice for those who wish to go up to see the peak. A testimony to the continuing vitality of Buddhism is the many visitors who still visit the sites associated with his life, more than 2,500 years later. Atop the hill, you can first pay a visit to the Vishvashanti Stupa, built by the Japanese Buddhist Society on the summit of the hill. The sweeping view of the plains may have perhaps stirred the deepest thoughts in the Buddha as he sat in contemplation here every morning. It was here at Vulture Peak at Rajgir that the Buddha, before a small and select group of disciples, turned the second wheel of Dharma. The Buddha's teachings and the techniques he taught for personal transformation and the training of the mind were varied. They depended on the needs and mental proclivities of his disciples. The Buddha gave his more esoteric teachings in the privacy here. It was where he taught the famous Mahana text, the Heart Sutra. A fundamental feature of the Buddha's mature teachings was that it embodied not only the governing value of liberation, but the dominance of compassion, a concern for others. A great council was held at Rajgir not long after the Buddha's death to preserve and codify his teachings for posterity. In his 79th year, the Buddha set out on his last journey. His flock had grown. The Buddha had been at pains to emphasize that he was not important, the teaching was. To his more accomplished disciples, even the teaching was not sacrosanct. What was, was logic and reason. On reaching here at Kushinagar, the dying Buddha asked the assembled monks three times whether they had any doubts or last questions, but all kept silent. He then delivered his final exhortation. Condition things are perishable by nature. Diligently seek realization. He entered deep, meditative calm, and died as he had learned to live.
the death of a truly great man often marks the beginning rather than the end of an era in terms of the progress of the human spirit. The difference lies in whether that man lived essentially for his own glory alone or devoted his life to the eternal principles of truth and to the happiness of all mankind. His body was cremated nearby. This mound marks the spot where the Buddha's mortal remains were consigned to the flames. After the cremation, his ashes and relics were divided into several parts by his followers. Over time, they were taken to different parts of the world and monuments were raised everywhere over them. Perhaps the most famous center for Buddhist learning after the Buddha's death was the University of Nalanda. While during his lifetime the Buddha visited Nalanda often it grew to the pinnacle of its stature and reputation some hundred years after his death. It was to become the first university in history, a great center of Buddhist thought and philosophical studies. For centuries, monks, students and scholars poured over the meaning of the Buddha's message within the confines of this monastic complex. The stone still endures. As long as it stands, pilgrims and travelers will continue to be drawn to it as they are to the life and the wisdom of the Buddha. To behold in stone his teaching of the transience of the world and the abiding commitment to altruism and compassion. They take back some of the perennial experience from this brief encounter. traditions of their own cultures while performing prayers and rituals that reflect the diversity of contemporary forms of the Buddhist faith and its global impact. These Tibetan monks practice the rituals of the Mahayana Buddhist tradition which evolved and was preserved for more than a thousand years in the isolation of the cold Tibetan plateau.
The story of the Buddha begins at Bodh Gaya, a four-hour drive from the state capital of Patna. The landscape of modern Bihar and the eastern parts of Uttar Pradesh, two of the largest states in modern India, are dotted with shrines commemorating the main events of the life of the Buddha. It was here that he lived and preached two and a half thousand years ago. The towering pinnacle of the Mahabodhi temple, or the temple of the great enlightenment, was built 1500 years ago in honor of the Buddha at Bodh Gaya. The enlightened one. The Buddha was born six centuries before Christ in the valley of the river Ganges, in the heart of India's ancient civilization. Today, pilgrims from different parts of the world gather to worship and meditate at the very place that Prince Siddharth, as he was known before his enlightenment, became the Buddha. He attained decisive knowledge of the nature and cessation of human suffering. These images celebrate an ancient legend, that of Prince Siddharth, who sacrificed his father's kingdom for the life of an ascetic in his search for wisdom and truth. He is known as Gautam Buddha. A personal experience of the surroundings in which the Buddha gained his greatest spiritual insights evokes a unique sense of history and encourages insights into the nature of his realizations and a sense of communion with that truth. Worshippers gather here following the